hey guys welcome back to another diy tutorial so in today's video is the part two of this pinafore jumpsuit so uh i made the pattern tutorial in case if you haven't seen it i'm going to put the link here or on the description box so you can go and uh, get your pattern ready then you come back here for the sewing tutorial because this is the sewing this is the sewing tutorial i'm going to introduce you to the fabric and the things you need to use to make your pinafore jumpsuit okay i'm going to recommend some few fabric for you in case if you you're confused on which of the fabric you need to use okay so welcome to my channel if you're if you're seeing my channel for the first time um you are welcome my name is chilera and if you're my returning subscriber, you are also welcome. I appreciate you all. But if you're here on my channel, you have been coming to my channel to watch my videos and you're yet to subscribe. May I ask you why you haven't subscribed? Please subscribe. So in today's video, I'm going to start by sharing with you the fabric I use and the fabric I was supposed to use before. So let's start with the fabric I was supposed to use. This baby right here. Seriously, I love this fabric. It's the color. Uh, I wish I saw this color on this one that I, I, I used at the end of the day. I would have loved to use this particular color. So the reason why I could not use this one is because it was too thick. This is thick crepe. This was too thick. The material is too thick. I feel like it's not going to be that flow like the red original this is the original uh style that i copy from as you can see the trouser is free it's not that stiff but i feel i feel like this one is going to give me that kind of stiffness so i didn't use it okay so this is thick crab and uh, right here is the one that i use this is crab I really don't like the color that much so i decide just to use it because the weight the, the weight is not that heavy this is very light it's really really light and uh, it's also stretchy so this is the fabric that i end up using and the one i use at my thumbnail so yeah this is what i use so yeah other than this i will advise you you can use um linen material so if you if you can use linen material, it's going to be super. And um, you can try Ankara. <laughs> Never can tell, but trust me, if you are going to use Ankara, it's not going to flow. But if you just want to use the Ankara because of the beauty of the the vibrant color, the um, yeah, the colorful materials, then you can try Ankara and see maybe make turn out nice. But the true fabric that you use, you can use lightweight crepe and um, you can use um, linen. Okay, linen material, I will recommend you 100% to use linen material or lightweight crepe. So, and the yard of the fabric I use is two and a quarter yard. I use two and a quarter yard because of my waistband. If not, two yard will have been enough for me to recreate my peanut for jumpsuit all right guys so the next thing that you will need to recreate your peanut for jumpsuit you will need rings okay so this is the ring that i use and for you to get this ring you need to go to a, a shoemaker shop because that is the only place where you're going to get this it's not common anywhere um but the prices the prices was much this was 100 naira per this tiny ring you're seeing when i was complaining the guy told me uh oh, it's because of the dollar increasement so i said no problem i need to just give me i end up getting uh, 1500 naira it was um he later gave me 16 pieces that he dashed me one i said okay thank you so yeah that is it basically um yeah so the next thing we are going to do we're going to go into the cutting and then the sewing tutorial all right so 
let's go then so before we go into the tutorial take note i'm using three rings in this tutorial okay i will be using three rings okay so after now i'm going to arrange my fabric and my paper so i will start cutting so i have arranged my fabric down and my front pattern is on it so i'm cutting out my front pattern first that is the uh, the trouser part okay i'm cutting out the front pattern first i will be cutting out the back pattern of camera so in case if you didn't see me cutting out the back this is the same way i'm going to do fold your fabric into two and place your back pattern and then cut okay so the next i'm going to be cutting out is the upper bodies so i will be cutting out the two pieces because i want to have the main piece and the lining i'm using the same fabric to cut that lining okay so that is why you see that i'm folding my fabric or my pieces into uh two this way so i'm going to place my um my back pattern okay arrange it proper before you cut okay while i was drafting i did not add my sewing allowance from the lower part so right now i'm adding 0 0.5 inch from the hemming part okay not the side the side i've already added my sewing allowance and the upper uh, part i've also add my sewing allowance okay so back pattern is ready i have the main piece here and the lining and the same thing i did here i'm going to be doing the same thing to the front pieces okay i will cut my front piece off camera and here is my pocket i'll also be cutting it off camera okay all right guys so i have cut out all my pieces okay i have cut out all my pieces these are my pocket this is part of the pockets okay i have a, a elastic here that i'm going to use for my waistband okay and the width of this elastic is um 1.5 inches one inch okay sorry the width is one inch that is one i'm going to use and then i have also gone ahead to uh, cut a long piece of fabric to create a bias this bias is the the one that i'm going to use to create a strap for my uh jumpsuit okay so the width of this is 2.5 inches 2.5 inches and then um, the length i have here i have 41 inches times two so by the time i'm going to done uh stop stitch this all the way down then i'm going to divide it into two so that i can have both the front and the back and also the same thing i'm going to do to this one when i stop stitch it i will divide it into two to have both the front and the back so here is my pocket okay so here is the pocket so i have cut out the pocket for the pocket covered i did not um i only iron interfacing on one of it which is going to serve as the main fabric then this one going to serve as the lining okay so i didn't do anything to here the reason why i, I iron interfacing on this is because the material i use is too light okay so i iron interfacing on it to give it a little bit thickness yeah so that is it basically so the next thing now i'm going to start now by working on my pieces so that i can start joining them together so here is the pocket flap so the length of these pieces that i'm going to use for my rings the pieces that i'm going to face my ring is is three inches and then when you fold it it's going to be 1.5 inches okay so i will use 0 0.5 inch to join it back to the pocket flap so the total length that will remain is going to be one inch so i will fold my pocket flap like this okay find the midpoint so that i can place back the rings on it okay and also the little pieces i have here i'm also going to fold it so that i can notch it to get the midpoint so after notching it i'm going to place it to the the point where i mark the midpoint for my pocket flap okay i'm going to pin it you need to pin it down to secure it down so i will get the lining and then place it and then pin it then go back to my sewing machine to join them okay so i have joined my pocket flap i have joined my pocket insert so right now i'm trimming off this uh excess that is the sewing allowance i'm trimming it off so that when i turn the pocket flap to the right side 
an ionate is going to relax okay it's not going to have those budgy uh, shooting stuff like that and then the same thing i'm doing today the main pocket you need to notch it so that when you turn it to the right side an iron is going to relay uh is going to relax okay basically so right now i'm going to turn it to the right side so that i can go back to my ironing table and iron it then i will be back So I have done iron and also I have uh, overlocked my pocket flap as you can see and then I fold in with zero, um, 0 0.125 okay. So and also I have ironed my pocket. So right now we are going to work on how to place the pocket to the front pieces okay. So um, I'm going to be marking 1.5 inches below okay as you can see just the way I place my tape okay going to place my tape there and mark 1.5 inches the length of my pocket is 4.5 okay so whatever length that you have between uh, the whole uh, bodies then minus whatever things that remain from the pocket and then use those things as the part where you're going to place your pocket okay so I'm going to be marking 1.5 inch here. So this part here that you see me working on is going to become my upper part. That is the chest line eventually because uh, I noticed that the lower part of the original dress, it has the, the, low, uh, the waist line is more wider than the chest. So I later switch this to, I use this part where I place my pocket facing up. I use it as my waistline. Then the part where I, I thought it to be my waistline uh, my waistline it became my chest line okay so i will go and stitch this down with rope and just stitch it down okay stop stitch it down like so so once i'm done stop stitch i'm going to place my pocket flap so mark 0 0.25 upward okay mark 0 0.25 upward first before you place your pocket flap as for a guideline okay just do that for a guideline so once i'm done I will go to my sewing machine now and uh, stop stitch my pocket flap to the pieces so i have done stop stitches so the next thing i will be working on the the straps so i have my two straps here and also i have two pieces that i'm going to fix my ring on okay those two pieces the two little uh, strap the length also is uh, three inches when you put it on foot it's going to be 1.5 inches okay as you can see i fix in my strap and then i fold in the rough edges and pin okay the same thing i'm going to do to the other side all right then get the long strap okay fix it through the the rings and uh, fold in the rough edges and then i will go to my sewing machine and stop stitch it here okay so i have done stop stitches so the next thing now i'm going to start uh facing my strap to my bodies okay so i'm going to get one of my strap before i will mark it uh, place it there i need to mark 0 0.5 inch allowance before placing my strap okay don't place your strap close to the edge of the or to the side because you need to keep allowance of you need to keep allowance of 0 0.5 inch so that you can use it to um stitch in your lining to your main fabric okay so that is what i'm doing i'm marking 0 0.5 inch on both sides so that i can before i will place my strap so the next thing i will just get my lining now and place it on top of it like so i will pin it okay so whatever thing i'm going to be doing here i will repeat the same process on my bodies okay on the back pattern so i will go and join with 0 0.5 inch allowance we are going to do this together. We are going to join this together, okay? So don't worry. You will see the part where I'm going to uh, start sewing. So the back doesn't have ring. So the only thing we need to do is to mark 0 0.5 inch on both sides, just like I did to the front for stitching allowance, where I'm going to be sewing my lining too, okay, before I will place my strap. So do this, okay, so that you have a clean and nice finishing, all right? So I will pin this down. So now we go back to the sewing machine to join our front pattern together, okay? So let's head over to the sewing machine. 
So right now I'm on the sewing machine and I will start my journey from the mid for the middle or from yeah from the center point of my bodies. Okay, I'm starting from the midpoint so that whatever excess that are left from the from the side, I can just easily trim it off. Okay. So yes, that is the reason why I'm starting or or start joining. I noticed that when you start your journey from the midpoint of uh, whatever thing you're doing, you end up having uh, everything equally. But when you start stitching from this side, it doesn't go corresponding. Okay, so try this trick if you work for me. Let me know in the comment section. All right. So once I'm done stitching the front, I move on to the back as well. Do the same thing. Start from the center front before you walk your way all the way to the side, okay? So once I'm done uh, stitching, we will head back to the cutting table to give it a very good press before we start any other thing. So guys, this is the next day. This is day two of working with this dress or this outfit rather. Okay, so today is Sunday. I started this work on Saturday, so today is Sunday. Um, this is how far I've gone with this. I have gone ahead to stop stitch, as you can see. I have stop stitch round. Sorry, my stitching are not clean, <laughs> they are rough. Okay, but yeah, the detail is really pretty rough, but please. Pardon me with that. Okay. So I have gone ahead to stop stitch this. Make sure that I got exactly what I saw on the videos. Okay. So this is the back. Okay. The back is just plain. It doesn't have any design on it. It's simple like this. It's only the front that carries a lot of the design. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to work on the pants. The bottom part. Okay. So this is the... The front, this is the back, okay, this is the back, this is the back, and here is the front. So I'm going to place the right side facing the right side. I'm going to join this first together before I will determine the, the width of my band because you know, it's an elastic waistband definitely it's not going to be the same uh length with my normal waistband that i usually cut okay so i'm going to go to the sewing machine to join the pants together i'm going to place the right side facing the right side okay so i'm going to go to my sewing machine i'm going to join it with one inch sewing allowance all the way to the end okay so my pants is ready. So the next thing I will do is to take the, the circumference of the waist so that I can be able to cut out my waistband, all right? So I have cut out my waistband and the width of this waistband is um, the width is 2.5 inches, okay? 2.5 inches. Remember that my elastic waistband is one inch, okay? The elastic waistband is one inch and I have here 2.5 inches. So I'm going to use 0.5 inch to join my upper bodies to the waistband. And also I will use 0.5 inch also to join the band to my trouser. Okay. To couple it to become one piece. All right. So, okay. So the next thing we are going to do now is how we are going to place this band. I want to have a a side joining not the center front or the center back joining okay so to do that now this is this part is the part where i'm going to place either one of the 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 bodies the back is going to be here or the front is going to be here so as you can see i create a, a midpoint okay so i fold it into two like this way and then i iron it to have this crease part here which is step one and then step two, you're going to fold it again into two like this again to iron it to have a crease part here. Okay. So once you've done that, you're going to have something looking like this. All right. So you see this crease line? 
the crease line you're seeing here they serve as a guideline to show exactly where i'm going to place my back pattern my back bodies and the front bodies okay so right here i have my bodies this is the front okay so this is the front and uh, here is the back so in every each of these bodies that i have here i i choose the part where i i, I kept as the the wrong side and the part that which is a right side okay basically the front you don't need to um crack your brain so much you already know that this part here is the right side okay um here is the wrong side so from the back i use this part here this stitching that is looks so rough at this point here i use it to indicate as the wrong side of my bodies so why this part here is the right side okay so the first thing i need to do i'm going to get my band okay here is my band and also the band also has the right side and also has the wrong side so the part where the crease line is facing me i am going to use this part as the wrong side of my band so i'm going to get my i'm going to get my front pattern okay my front bodies okay this is my front bodies this is the right side facing me and this is the wrong side facing me okay so what i'm going to do I'm going to switch to this part like this okay i'm going to turn it on this way okay and now the right side is facing me the wrong side of my front body is facing me so i'm going to place it the right side facing the right side okay so i'm going to go this way and also find the midpoint of your bodies okay don't do this without finding the midpoint of your front bodies so as you can see there is a crease line right here i'm just going to use this crease line as a guideline to find out where my my midpoint okay so i'm going to place this right side facing the right side like this all right so i'm going to place it like that and i will pin this down So move on to the, the back bodies. I'm going to come to the end here also. So this part here is going to serve as the side, okay? The side, uh, side joining or this, this side, okay? So this is the midpoint or rather this is my back bodies. I'm, this part also serves as a midpoint of my band. So I'm going to get my uh, half bodies or the back. Remember, I said that this is the right side facing me, and uh, this also the wrong side facing me up, okay? Or you can just mark this so that you know this is the wrong side facing me. So right now, I'm going to place the right side facing the right side, okay? And here is the midpoint here. I'm just going to place it here like so and pin. So now that I have done pin this now, the next I will do, I will get the second band, okay? The second band. Um, I'm going to also find the right side, okay? I'm going to use this crease line. To use as a guideline all right so i'm going to this here is the wrong side for me so i'm going to place this on top of each other like this okay so i will pin start pinning from the end here i'm going to start pinning from here make sure that you arrange them proper pin here so now that i've done pin this i'm going to go to the sewing machine i'm going to go and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance okay let's go and do that together so i'm on the sewing machine now i'm going to start now by joining remember when i say start your journey from the midpoint of whatever thing you're doing right yes that is what i just do so that whatever excess that left it's going to be on the both side of all the edges okay so once i'm done stitching it here so 
I have done stitch it and also I have give it a very good press okay so this is the front and this is the back so the next thing now we're going to join this band together okay to form a circle so that we can now join it back to our pant okay so as you can see you place the right side facing the right side like so and you're going to pin okay so once i'm done pin this i will go back to my sewing machine and then i will join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance okay so i will be back so i have done join the side together so this is how it's looking like right now okay I'm going to get my pants now and then so I can join the half bodies to my pants. So I'm going to begin now by placing my half bodies to my pants so that I can turn it to the jumpsuit. Okay, make sure the front half bodies is face is at the same part where your trouser or front is. Okay, don't miss it. Don't go and turn it to the back and the all the front. Okay. So right now I'm going to pin it so that I can go back to my sewing machine to join. Before I will join it, I'm going to be keeping allowance, okay? At this point, I'm going to be keeping a, um, a space where I will fit in my elastic waistband, okay? I will fit in my elastic, okay? So I have done join my upper bodies to the lower part, so as you can see. So the next thing we're going to do now is to work on the elastic, okay? So this is the part where... My elastic is going to come out from so before you cut out your elastic um your waist circumference you're going to minus five inches away from your waist circumference mine is 28 inches i will be marking 23 inches so i took out uh, five inches excess and i'm still going to take out more uh, inches because i will be joining my band together so whatever thing i'm cutting i'm not adding any allowance so the excess i took out from my waistband is six inches in total at the end of the day okay so right now i'm going to fix in my band elastic band inside my waist so here i am struggling to take it out okay it was stressful to be honest it was really stressful most especially i did not have the safe, uh, safety pin assuming i have the safety pin it will have been more much much better for me to take it out than this struggling anyway i have succeeded taking it out so the next thing i will do i'm going to pin this so i will go back to my sewing machine and stop stitch okay i'm going to stop stitch this and then i will be back so i have done stop stitch it so this is how it's looking like i secure the life of this uh, elastic <laughs> so it will not just go and lose up so right now what i'm going to do i will just uh, arrange it well so i will go back to my overlocking machine and then i'm going to overlock the rough edges if you don't have overlocking machine it's okay you can just iron your dress and it's ready to go okay so i will stop stitch the part where i left open from to fit in my elastic so yeah that is it so we have come to the end of this tutorial so this is the beautiful dress which i'm yet to rock it okay so thank you so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and comment subscribe if you're yet to subscribe and don't forget to turn on your post notification so you get notified when another tutorial will be dropping okay thank you so much once again have a beautiful morning afternoon evening wherever you're watching this from